Hey, Thomas DeLauer here, and I'm feeling like doing a 48 hour fast. So I'm gonna lay out the benefits and then I'm gonna lay out how you should go about doing this. And I wanna invite you to do it with me. So this video is gonna break down some of the quick benefits coming from a fat burning perspective, coming from a microbiome perspective, but I'll make it all brief. And then I'll jump over to what's important and what you need to know to do this with me. Cause I do want it to be a community thing. And if you're watching this video later on, by all means, please use this as an instruction guide to do a 48 hour fast. Cause in my opinion, a 48 hour fast is the best length fast. It is my favorite. So let's go ahead and jump in. If you haven't already, please do hit the red subscribe button and then hit the little bell icon so you never miss our daily videos. So we're gonna cover fat loss first cause I think that that's a big thing that people are after. And 48 hour fasts kind of get this, I don't know, sort of this stigma that it's only a longevity thing. There's tremendous fat loss effects that come from a 48 hour fast. So let's talk about them. But before we embark on this community fast together, go ahead and download the Zero app. I put a link down below in the description. It's a totally free app. You can use the free version. But if you do check out Zero Plus, which is the paid version of the app, it has a bunch of content from me on it in terms of how to break a fast, just a bunch of cool strategic things for your fasting. So I highly recommend you check it out. There's a special link down below in the description for a one year subscription if you do want to use the Zero Plus version. But like I said, the free version is totally good to go. So check them out and then now let's get into the benefits. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the fat loss side of things. And the first thing I wrote down is PPAR alpha. Now this sounds like scientific jargon because it is, but the reason that I put it on there is because it's one of my favorite proteins within the body and it upregulates when you are fasting for an extended period of time. So the reason a 48 hour fast is so tremendous for fat loss is because this PPAR alpha is a transcription factor for genes related to fat oxidation. What that means is when you go into a fast, your body releases fatty acids into the bloodstream and that triggers a signal for this protein to elevate. When this protein PPAR alpha elevates, it allows your body to burn even more fat because it ends up becoming much more than just a protein. It's a signaling device and it's gonna have a lot of powerful attributes. So what it does is it signals the body to ultimately burn more fat, but it also signals the body to upregulate uncoupling proteins. These uncoupling proteins trigger our body to burn more calories as heat. So imagine if you took calories coming in and it actually just turned it into heat, like one of those radiator heaters, right? That's essentially what uncoupling proteins do. So when we have PPAR alpha elevate, it elevates the uncoupling proteins, which makes it so we potentially burn more fat. Additionally, it's much more muscle sparing to do a 48 hour fast than repeated shorter fasts. Why? Because your body starts to produce ketones with a 48 hour fast and beta hydroxybutyrate is extremely muscle sparing. When you're looking at fat loss, you want to keep your muscle on you. If you start losing muscle, you're losing your metabolic rate. You're slowing down your metabolic rate. So that is a huge benefit, but I don't want to touch on ketones too much right now. Now, what's interesting is with a 72 hour fast, studies have shown that that's when muscle catabolism starts to kick in. So the reason a 48 hour fast is better than a 72 in my opinion is because you get all the benefits that we're going to talk about, but you don't have the muscle breakdown as much. All right. Then I want to talk about the brain for a minute. I'll touch on this just briefly. The Applied Physiology and Nutrition and Metabolism Journal published something that found that there is a 3.5x boost in what is called BDNF with fasting. So when you fast, you have what's called brain-derived nootropic factor, which comes in and it feeds brain cells. It allows your brain to grow. It literally is like a brain fertilizer, brain-derived nootropic factor. Very interesting. So this study found that fasting boosted BDNF more than three different kinds of exercise. Normally we would think, well, exercise creates lactate. Lactate can stimulate BDNF. All complicated jargon. Point is, this study found that fasting stimulates more BDNF and allows your brain to function better than exercise does. Exercise plus fasting might really be powerful. But additionally, BDNF stimulates serotonin, which is the feel-good neurotransmitter. But then there's kind of a good cycle here. So BDNF stimulates serotonin, but then serotonin boosts BDNF. So once you kickstart this process, you realize like, 36 hours into your fast, you feel on cloud nine. Again, one of the reasons why I'm such a fan. The anti-aging effects are phenomenal. You can do a 48 hour fast semi-frequently. Okay, so what happens is you get into deeper ketosis. Now, deeper ketosis from a fasting perspective is way different than a ketogenic diet. Okay, we want ketones to be produced while we're fasting because it preserves our muscle. But additionally, they bind to what is called HCAR2, which triggers sirtuins like SIRT1 to come to life which trigger a lot of anti-aging properties down this cascade. Long story short, tremendous anti-aging effects. Also, a lot of upregulation of cellular recycling and autophagy. 
It just, again, you're not gonna get that with a typical 16 hour fast. But one of the things that I like the most is mitochondrial biogenesis. In case you didn't know, mitochondrial biogenesis is where the mitochondria essentially uh, replicate or increase in mass so that they can be more efficient and effective. A lot of disease states and metabolic disorders are a result of mitochondrial deficiencies. As we get older, our mitochondria begin to just get weaker. And then those weak mitochondria give birth to weaker mitochondria and so on down the line. If we can improve mitochondrial biogenesis with healthy, good functioning mitochondria like we are just achieving with a fast, then we can actually improve that biogenesis where we develop more powerful mitochondria. In essence, and I'm careful to say this to not make a crazy claim, we could reverse some aging, hypothetically. Okay, now, additionally, ketones are gonna produce more ATP. Simply put, what that means with the electron transport chain is it means that as an energy source, ketones pack a more powerful punch. Okay, they get into the cell faster and they have more potential energy than glucose does. That's just a really powerful thing. I could go on and on and have other videos that explain that in more depth, but quite frankly, it's complicated and I don't wanna bore you with the details. Then the one that I think is very, very important, especially this day and age, you have a greater microbiome effect. Okay, 16 hour fast, great. 24 hour fast, great. 48 hour fast, great, great, great. Because you actually give your body a chance for the janitorial crew to come in and clean. You cannot clean an office building if you still have a bunch of people in the office. You gotta wait for them to leave for the janitorial crew to come in and really do a good cleaning job. Well, 48 hour fast, we leave plenty of room for the last person to leave the office. Now, the Scandinavian Journal of Immunology published a study that found there was a greater clearance of bad pathogens during a fast. Great, we get rid of salmonella, we get rid of bad bacteria potentially, allowing good bacteria to grow. Take note of that, because it'll be on this next little piece that I'm gonna explain in a second. There's a hypothesized activation of what's called MCT1, which is a genetic pathway to, again, turn white fat into brown fat that has to do specifically with the gut biome. Just proving that fasting affects the gut biome, which consequently affects our overall fat deposition and where we gain fat. Lastly on this, more autophagy. We get more autophagy, more cellular recycling with a 48 hour fast. The deeper we get into a fast, more autophagy occurs. But after a 72 hour fast, for instance, autophagy doesn't necessarily continue to increase. It's not linear, it doesn't just keep going up, 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 up. There is a line of diminishing return. You get the most bang for the buck with a 48 hour fast. I'm really excited for you to join me with this. So here's what we're actually going to do. Here's the process. Okay, I want you to stop and read this. Number one, like I said, I want you to download that Zero app. Okay, that's gonna be really important. It's gonna help you out, and quite frankly, it gives us all a way to be a part of the community together. So I just highly, highly, highly recommend you check it out. It's down below in the uh, description. Prior to starting this fast, the night before you start, okay, the, your last meal should be low fat and low carb. The reason is I want you to be able to A, get into ketosis faster during your fast, okay? But low fat because I don't want your body to have more fats to have to burn through exogenously. I want you to activate that PPAR alpha that I talked about over here as soon as possible and low fat will make that possible. But we're just talking about your last meal. I just want it to digest fast. But then during your fast, water is okay. Coffee is okay. Black. Tea is okay. No creamers, no sweeteners. Keep it simple. Water, black coffee, green tea or black tea or matcha, whatever. Plain up, that's it, straight and simple. Now, as far as minerals go, I'm okay with you taking some potassium, I'm okay with you taking magnesium, and I'm okay with you adding salt. If you have an electrolyte that you like to use, go for it, but I even encourage you in this particular case for a 48 hour fast, let's try to keep it clean and try to avoid even stevia and monkford if we can. Moderate activity is good to go. I don't want you to train any harder or any easier than you ordinarily would. Okay, I wanna keep the variables out of the equation and just let the fast do its job. But on the second day of your fast, I want you to do more aerobic type work. Go for a low intensity walk or run. Reason is, is at this point, you're producing ketones. At this point, you're oxidizing fat as your primary fuel source. So you might as well do an exercise that leverages that. High intensity work is going to demand glycogen, going to demand carbohydrates, and they're going to evacuate out of your glycogen into the bloodstream. I'd rather you just straight burn those ketones and get all these anti-aging effects. Then I want you to reduce your cortisol levels prior to breaking a fast. How do you do this? Relax. You need to be in a relaxed state. I can't overemphasize that. Don't hastily break your fast. Relax, bring your cortisol levels down. Because if your cortisol levels are elevated when you break your fast, you will store more of the food that you consume in a negative way. Which leads me to how to break your fast. Bone broth would be the recommended way. Your gut's gonna be sensitive. Your gut mucosal layer will be kind of tender after a long period of time without eating. So eight to 12 ounces of simple bone broth. 
uh, and then move on to a lean protein meal. Literally just a protein shake or heck, just some lean protein, some lean turkey, some lean chicken. Keep it lean. I want it just to absorb the protein fast, plain and simple. Then 60 minutes later or so, then enjoy a more delicious meal. But that breakfast meal is so important and I cannot overemphasize that enough. Okay, then the next day, this is just an added bonus. Remember how I said the bad bacteria is gonna die off during your fast? Well, that means you're left with good bacteria for the most part, at least based on some of the clinical stuff I've seen. Okay, so if you're left with good bacteria, you might as well pour some water on that and make it grow, right? So in this case, ghee, because it's a short chain fatty acid, so have lots of ghee the next day after you break your fast. Also have some resistant starch. You can do a quick Google search on that. Resistant starch is gonna be like um, even a potato that's been heated and then cooled down or some green banana flour, anything like that. Do some searches on resistant starches. It's too many to list. Okay, and then prebiotic fibers, artichoke, asparagus, onions, garlic. Why? They grow bacteria that is already existing in your gut. If you have good bacteria in your gut and low bad bacteria, you're gonna just grow more of that good bacteria and it's gonna give you a more diverse gut biome and you're gonna be in a really great situation. I'm so excited to be able to do this together. So make sure you're doing it as a community and I'm going to start tomorrow, which is April 20th, but it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant because people are gonna watch this video all the time. Do it with me, use the app, track it, have fun. This is how you do a 48 hour fast. See you soon.